Good morning, everyone. <gasps> the sun is shining on a beautiful, almost autumnal morning. Oh my gosh, it literally feels like autumn. There's like condensation on the windows. It's so weird. You literally like feel the seasons changing and it's just like a sensory thing. I mean, it's just lovely. I love it. Um, I have freshly washed hair. So first hair wash since having it done, I used all of the moisturizing products and I did my oil overnight, which is fully part of my routine. I've basically um, just started following, I, I follow her on Instagram already, but I follow Ling on TikTok now. And I didn't realize that she'd done a degree in, I don't know what the technical term is, but like in tra tracky something to do with hair. She's like a hair specialist now. And so I'm literally following all of her videos, like, okay, oils, yeah, okay, cool. Masks, yeah, okay, cool. Just to kind of brush up on what I need to be doing for my hair, basically, just to like keep it all nice and healthy. But yeah, really loving how soft the color is. And yeah, very excited. Um, something lovely arrived yesterday. My Karen Millen Autumn Winter Collection arrived um, and the sun has come out. <laughs> so I fully <laughs> put this dress aside to wear this today because I thought it was gonna be like a bit cold and miserable. I'm gonna pack it with me because I'm staying down in London. But this is one of my favorite pieces from the collection. And um, obviously we went for this really kind of romantic pleat detail and uh, I think this is gonna be such a beautiful autumn winter dress. So I did want to wear this today, but I don't think I'm going to because um, it's supposed to rain. The other dress that I wanted to wear is from my other collection, um, but I'm gonna pack this in my suitcase. So the other dress I was gonna wear is this one. I was gonna pop a blazer over the top, um, but it is so long. I'm worried about it on the floor. I think it's too long for me to wear in London. Oh, I love this dress. I need to get it taken up. It's why I don't wear it so much because it's too long and I'll clean the streets of London with my dress. I'm gonna try it on though. <laughs> oh my goodness, how cool is this? <gasps> this is one of the pieces from my next collection that I've popped on with my last collection. I'm like, do you know what? I'm gonna take this and I might wear this tonight to the premiere. I'm going to the premiere of the new um, George Clooney and Julia Roberts film. And um, it's not like black tie or anything, but you still want to look nice. Um, it's called like end of summer chic, but this is a piece from my current collect, well, my, my new collection with Karen Millen. And I've popped it on with this long maxi dress from my last collection. And I think it looks really lovely. So lovely. Where's my blazer? Hello. See, if I wore it with boots, it'd be okay. Do you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I don't know now, because I, I might wear it tonight. Hi, it's future me here. I just wanted to pop in some clips. It's also a really good opportunity for me to say that this video was filmed and the previous video was filmed before we sadly lost the Queen. I'm not somebody who, like, I don't know, I'm not, I, I'm not sure what to say at times like this, but I, I do know how to feel. And so for the most part, um, I am, I don't know, just taking a few lessons. I mean, I reflect a bit in a future video and talk to you about it, but, it's a sad time for everyone. Ali and I just spend our evenings kind of catching up on the the, the daily happenings of the royal family and the, the process of changing from a queen to a king. Um, and also obviously we are um, on Monday, I think pretty much nobody in the UK will be working. I'm not too sure. It's been declared a bank holiday. So that will be a day that I obviously miss uh, filming and um, won't be uploading. I just want to say that I'm often filming a lot in advance. So it can be a bit difficult if you're want, expecting like uh, immediate reactions to, to the news, which I always say this channel isn't a news channel and my reactions are not anything that you should base your own feelings or your own experiences or what you're thinking about a situation. I am literally just a person who's sharing their life with you and I do so in a safe way so that I'm not uploading in real time for my own safety, for my family's safety, for um, lots of different reasons. But yeah, so I often see those comments and I know that they're probably meant in, in such a innocent way, but 
I have to be able to do this in a way that works for not only the girls that work for me, but family life, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, yeah, but also just being different. Like everybody, everybody shows respect to, to people that they don't know in very different ways and everybody mourns and is sad and reacts in very different ways and I, I just think that my space on the internet is very much a space where however you mourn um however you deal with things it's a safe space for all of those things even if you lash out at other people um telling them how they should feel at times like this it, it, that's fine it's a safe space here because i've got i'm i'm you know i'm well aware of the way different people react to things on the internet. So if you're sad and you're upset and you're kind of needing to take it out on someone, I'd rather you took it out on me than anybody else because they might not be able to take it the way that I can. So I just wanted to preface this section because it is an opportunity for me to drop something in and let you know that my last two videos, um, we were actually in London as they announced that members of the royal family were heading to Balmoral. And my video was uploaded before the Queen sadly passed away. Um, I wish at times like this I had a crystal ball, but hopefully, if anything, my video provided you with a small amount of, I don't know, escapism, because as we know, there is so much more access to news now, there is a lot more going on in the world, and it can be quite overwhelming, and I know that a lot of us are very, very sensitive souls, so if you needed just a half an hour, 40 minutes, an hour, to just kind of escape, forget about the sadness of us losing our longest reigning monarch, um, hopefully my video provided that for you. But I am now going to get into um, my favourite pieces from my Karen Millen collection, and um, hopefully you will enjoy seeing these. I know that I have worked incredibly hard over the last few months. The team has worked exceptionally hard as always, and um, we're just very, very excited to bring you our autumn collection in this capacity. So yes, I'm gonna show you my favorite pieces. I'm wearing one of them. This is probably my favorite dress from the entire collection. I think, you know, you don't need me to explain why that is. Um, it's green, it's floral, and it's beautiful. Like I think the detailing on this is stunning. We've got beautiful sort of satin, satin cuffs. Um, we've got the stunning, but slightly more, it kind of gives it a, a more um, formal edge, is this pleat detailing to the fabric as well. Covered buttons, beautiful satin, like detailing to the, to the hem, and when I say it, I mean, it's self-explanatory. One of the other pieces from my collection, which I think works quite well with this dress, is we are bringing you, we have a new collection of Italian wool coats and of course it would not be an autumn coat in my collection if we didn't do one in the most beautiful shade of green. I imagine that one day this would be something that the new Princess of Wales will uh, wear because I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's got this beautiful removable black faux fur collar. I personally think that I wear more of like a formal look when it's the, the faux fur collar, but I actually like for more day-to-day -day wear, the more typical military style coat. So we've got the beautiful, almost British racing green lining there. Now I would probably wear it like this in, on day-to-day -day in London. You can just see a, a slight flash of the skirt. It has the stunning, epaulettes and military style shoulders. This is a very classic style, sorry, you can still see where we've um, stuck things down in campaign. And then the covered belt buckle to cinch in the waist as so. Now also it's got these beautiful pockets down here, so you're not actually limited to this space. You can just keep that nice formal look. You've got these hidden pockets, which I love. There's a beautiful amount of fabric in the skirt of this coat as well, which I think gives it gorgeous shape. It also comes in the classic stone oatmeal kind of colour with a beautiful faux tipped fur collar, which I think, oh my gosh, I can't even decide which is my favourite, but you know that this with some beautiful buttery uh, ivory, cashmere, cashmere dresses, scarves are going to look so gorgeous alongside this coat and I just love the length of them. They're so beautiful. 
a real kind of sort of mid axy style coat, which I love, but <gasps> now this dress really is a pièce de résistance because this is detailing wise spec Spectacular. It has the most beautiful blue on sleeves and so much intricate detailing to it. I really think that this is going to be the sort of dress that's teeing you up nicely when moving into the party season. This is the season where you need to sort of dust off your old dresses, see if you need something new and um, get prepped for the party season because <gasps> um, this dress, is sl it comes up slightly bigger on me, um, which I don't think it's an issue because we designed some amazing accessory pieces to go with these kinds of dresses just to give them and it really is and these pieces really are like a modern take on corsetry from hundreds of years ago and I am just in love with how these have come out. You can wear this with knitwear, you can wear this with overcoats because they come in different sizes. So what you could do is buy a larger one if you wanted to sort of um, give this same kind of structure to coats and um, outerwear. Imagine this with sort of like a, um, a scarf underneath it. It really is sitting in line with my love of like historical dramas and things like that. So it comes in the beautiful tan colour and then it has the champagne detailing. So really, really versatile. Again, we have another take. So this could be worn as a top on its own, but I really love the idea, especially with this over shirt dresses. Again, to give it that kind of more structured feel. I cannot cope, especially these tones. We also have the black version, which was styled up this way for campaign. Again, this has got more of a silvery tone to the hardware, so it just gives it a little bit of variation, which works alongside some alternative accessories. <laughs> and of course, we did the top in the black as well just to show you that on as well you would have seen this in campaign i wore it with um a shirt and a pair of leather trousers and it just gives the most theatrical shape now you just know that this dress is going to be the perfect autumn winter dress and for comfort as well the other thing i love about this is that it has highlighted to me that the majority of my posture issues are because I slouch. Like, look how much my shoulders stick out when I slouch. And actually, if I stood up straight, this fits on my shoulders perfectly. So I feel like I need to wear this dress for the whole of winter just to correct my posture because I feel so much better stood like this. But it is just incredible. So it has these beautiful sheer sleeves, which I think gives it a real lightness because I feel like things could be quite heavy in, in winter and I really wanted to bring a little bit more of sort of ethereal lightness to this collection and this dress has absolutely done it. I love the pussy bow detailing as well. Um, it just gives it a sort of elegance which it goes with my warmer accessories super well so it means I don't have to just wear an all black outfit. We can warm things up just like this. Oh my goodness. I actually cannot wait to just wear this everywhere. And this particular black coat really did steal the show. Now I probably wouldn't necessarily, I don't know actually, I haven't tried it on with a dress just yet. So this coat is pretty spectacular. What we wanted to do was tap in to the more like hourglass shape um, of sort of like 90, I think it's like 1950s coats. Yeah, so I'd probably wear this with either a shorter dress or trousers, but this coat has the corsetry details at the back. So everyone, when I put this on my um, on my stories, people were like, have you just clipped that? Like, no, this has a built-in corsetry detail, so you can really suck in the waist to create an accentuated waist. So if I do this up and show you what I mean, so as you can see, it's already got a really nice shape to it, but if you want to cinch it in even more, you can do so. And it has beautiful structure, gorgeous, gorgeous structure to the shoulders as well. And obviously it's got pockets. And I just think this for a workwear piece is ex 
exceptional. This is the camel version. The quality of this coat is another level. And again, works really well with the black outfit because it's got these more sort of black horn buttons and you can wear it over your shoulders. But I actually kind of prefer the camel with the black. I think it works really well. These warm tones together. Oh, so, so gorgeous. And you can see the corsetry detailing at the back like so. Those are some of my favorite pieces. There is also the most gorgeous navy coat. We've got a new kind of take on the rose print trouser and top. So if you missed out on that, we have a beautiful romantic um, two piece, which I know some of you are gonna be very excited about because lots of you missed out on that. And I think it works super well with the warmer tones for this season. Loads of wonderful fabrics as well. So I'll link my collection. I hope you enjoy it. I can't believe that this is like, this is like my second autumn winter collection and I actually like, I can't believe that I feel so lucky that I get to do this and I get, I feel so lucky that I get to work with Karen and team. I feel so lucky that I get to see incredible amounts of you wearing these pieces, wearing them, loving them on your holidays, making memories in them. And the one thing that is really important to me is that this isn't like, obviously I do seasonal collections. So I only do four collections a year, which is autumn, winter, spring, summer. And we really work hard to keep that to a really select amount of pieces. So usually it's a 30 piece collection. And what's really amazing to me is how many of you buy into this. I feel like I've said this a hundred times because now there's been so many collections, but just know that my, gra my gratitude for being able to do this is endless. Everything will be linked in the description box down below and I'm so thankful, so yeah. Okay, I've actually decided that I'm gonna wear that dress this evening for the premiere because I actually think it's the perfect blend of autumn and summer because it's got slightly longer sleeves, heavier fabric, but it's still like a nice ivory color. So I'm wearing this Arvel dress for today just because it's comfortable and I'm gonna pop on um, a blazer over the top because all of my autumn collection is probably not best suited for a day when it's gonna be sunny because obviously it's gonna be slightly warmer and thicker. But I've got my um, floral green dress with me. I've got my uh, corsetry belt because I think I'll wear that with the shirt dress this evening um, just to kind of change it up a little bit. And um, basically today we're heading down to London. I've got three meetings. I don't know who they're with. One's with Penn Halligans, uh, the other is my gorgeous girl, Charlotte Fielder. And then we're staying the night at the Savoy, which is obviously part of uh, the Fairmont Group. And I'm really, really looking forward to properly experiencing the Savoy um, because I've stayed there a couple of times, maybe is it once or twice. And um, it's only ever been when I've been going to like the BAFTAs and things like that. And I've never really got to experience it properly because you literally like come in, go out, and then um, go leave the next morning. So fingers crossed we get to really experience it today. Um, but I'm looking forward to a day in London. As you can probably hear with all of the banging, I'm gonna be coming home to yet more carnage, but I'm so, honestly, it's really funny. I really thought this was gonna stress me out like it used to. It just doesn't stress me out anymore. It really doesn't. It's just like accepting the situation and I'm like, I know that at the end of this, it's gonna be so wonderful. So it, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it like start to come together though. Um, obviously I've not driven my car yet either. So um, that's like itching <laughs> within me, but um, I'm gonna get everything packed up, ready to go so we can head down to London. I meet Carrie at the station and hopefully we can have a lovely girls evening as well. We have arrived into London. We're heading currently to Regent Street to the Penn Halligan store and we are going past the new Intimis Me boutique, which has opened basically on this kind of square in London. Oxford Circus. Oxford Circus. Is this Oxford Circus? So it's only one of the biggest places in London, but you know. I thought Oxford Oh, uh, yeah, on Oxford <laughs> Circus. <laughs> Oops. Um, it's, so it's an intimacy in Caledonia store and it's like basically on Oxford Circus. I'm like this, this square thing. <laughs> Country bumpkin. Um, yeah, so we're heading for our first meeting of the day. I'm topped up on coffee and the sun is shining, which I was not expecting today. It said rain all day, so I'm expecting it to come, but uh, we shall see.
So these are the three fragrances that I have uh, settled on. Lady Blanche and High Grove Bouquet. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. This is inspired by Prince Charles's garden at High Grove. And oh my gosh, it is stunning. I don't think it's out yet, but when it is, I will let you know. And then of course, I can't go wrong with some orange blossom. I really, really loved Lily of the Valley as well, but um, I think I'm gonna save this one for spring because it's so beautiful and fresh, but I found my fragrances. How beautiful. This is the Penn Halligan's Boutique. It is absolutely gorgeous. You can have things engraved, you can buy personalized, um, you can buy personalized little leather pouches as well. There is also the most beautiful boxes and packaging. Like look at this presentation and everything just feels so spectacular here. Look at all of these gallery walls. I'd love to get some things like this in our in our house I, see this is such a great idea for the paneling downstairs <gasps> i need to get a picture of this for ali to show him what it will look like So I've got my Penn Halligan's bag and my suitcase and we are missioning it from this meeting to the next. to the Savoy and it looks absolutely beautiful honestly this is like the dream they've got all of their autumnal decor out which makes me feel in good company because I've just done mine but the cabinetry the shops good old North Northamptonshire born and bred uh, brands obviously they're now owned by like a very I think it's like Prada or something but very good brand Right, we have made it to the Savoy. I'm staying here with my Fairmont family and we have just checked in to hands down the most spectacular room of my life. Like when I tell you that this is the room of my dreams, I mean it. I've stayed at the Savoy before and it was just as magical then, but this room is everything. Like we are literally living our best girls, like, day and night in London ever through this room and exactly what we're doing this evening. So this is my little hallway complete with beautiful antique furniture, a little powder room through here, which of course only the Savoy could do this beautiful kind of floral um, butterscotch coloured wallpaper in the most elegant way. Look at this mirror. Oh my gosh, we've, we've not even gone in yet. This sofa is a dream, like an actual dream. The tassels, the green check, the green cushions, and the, the curtains, I just cannot cope with. And all of the most wonderful touches to wonderful pictures, just to remind me <laughs> of myself and beautiful autumnal flowers. We've got some ice creams, we've got some fruit. Look at this area. Oh, and I wanna know what is behind this mirror because, oh wow, yeah, that's a selfie spot right there. <laughs> I love it, but the views. When I tell you that we have the most incredible views, the London Eye, Big Ben looking big, Ben and beautiful <laughs> over the water and the Royal Festival Hall. And then through here, oh, I want to steal this sage green tissue box holder as well. Lots of beautiful artwork, which of course I love. Set within the panels, flowers, and then we come through to the bedroom. The bedroom of dreams and it's so funny because you are in London and yet you feel so kind of protected and shut off from the world and all of the sort of the, the busyness of London you can see all of the red buses and things like that but you just feel so detached because everything is so quiet um, a little makeup station here I've already started dumping my stuff everywhere 
this bed. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Sounds like our champagne has arrived. And then into the bathroom, we have the most gorgeous claw foot roll top bath with a beautiful pampered lady there. And hers and hers sinks, complete with Penhaligons, who we just spent the morning with. This is their Quercus, which is their um, oak tree fragrance, which is really, really beautiful. And we definitely sampled that one as well. I'll show you what I got from Penhaligons as well. We had such a wonderful meeting with the, with the lady from Penhaligons. It was just a wonderful way to start the day. Then we have another little throne in here and then the shower and lots of storage as well. But we now have to get ourselves ready because we are going to the world premiere of Ticket to Paradise, which is George Clooney, Julia Roberts and I'm a big fan of Julia Roberts. So we need to get ourselves ready. We need to enjoy this room and we need to enjoy a very beautiful glass of champagne. Oh. So, whilst I have five minutes, I thought that I would unbox what I picked up from Penhaligons. And honestly, I think for me, what was really interesting about going in there and the lady who was showing us around the store and like introducing us, um, had the most incredible nose on her. So she could literally tell me which fragrance was which, like, and there are so many fragrances with Pen Penhaligons. And I think for me, I naturally went for Empressa from the word go, because I assumed that they were kind of known for their more um, complex fragrances, fragrances that are a bit stronger, very, um, very, uh, what's the word, unique. Um, so a lot of their fragrances I would smell and I would be sort of like, oh wow, that's so strong. Whereas this time I really got to have an introduction to their more um, like elegant, delicate, feminine fragrances. And when I tell you I had like six at one point, um, but I was trying to pick one that was good for this season. So I actually have some that I think I'll get later down the line, uh, maybe in spring, summer. And there's one fragrance that um, is being sent to me, which is their High, High Grove Bouquet. And oh my goodness. So basically they worked with Prince Charles on creating a fragrance from his garden. And there's like hyacinth in there. Um, what were the other flowers that was in there, Carrie? What, High Grove one? Yeah. Hyacinth. Yeah, lime blossom trees. Yeah, lime blossom trees. Um, honestly, it was like the most beautiful, beautiful, but not typical floral fragrance. And that's coming, it's being sent. So yeah, I'm not gonna wear that this evening, but um, she was just amazing at helping me identify fragrances that were right for me. Um, obviously, Empressa for me is really quite deep and quite sensual and very, very complex. So obviously I went for Orange Blossom. I don't know whether I'm gonna wear this one tonight, actually, I need to make a decision. So Orange Blossom is very much um, a fragrance that I love, very Mediterranean, but still it's got that really, that real sweetness to it. It's definitely a more, I would say crowd, crowd pleasing floral. Um, it, it has, I will always say it has this kind of like sun creamy undertone to it. That's what I think that's why I like it. Um, and this is, like sweeter than um, my other orange blossom fragrances. So naturally I went for that. I think part of the really lovely thing about Penhaligons is it's so steeped in British like culture and history. And it really feels like you're almost stepping back in time when you're in their store and you're choosing your fragrance. It's very experiential. And I just think their bottles are some of the most beautiful to have sat on your dressing table. Um, so I got the orange blossom one and then from their portraits collection. Uh, it, this is their Lady Blanche uh, fragrance. And this one, basically there's almost like a story and a, and a person that these fragrances are based around and inspired by. And this particular fragrance is someone that is, um, takes quite a lot of pride in their, in their appearance, in how they dress, they're very well put together. Um, there's a very funny story about, I believe, yes, she poisoned her husband, Lord George, inheriting his wealth and burying his secrets forever. <laughs> I love it. So they basically have a bit of a sort of um, character profile on the back of, of the person that this was sort of inspired by. Um, 
a darling of Lon London society and one of the most in influential ladies in Britain, her aloof beauty, mysterious past and blazing passions are scrutinised by all, from shop girls to royalty. Um, and instantly I loved this fragrance and it was really funny, the, the, the girl that was doing the pro helping me find the fragrances, she was basically like, um, this seems quite fitting. I was like, stop it, I'm definitely not going to poison my husband. <laughs> But um, this is sort of the more, uh, more what's the, the newer kind of collection from Penhaligons and it was really, really lovely. Maybe I'll wear that tonight because I feel like I'm wearing quite a, um, it was very difficult to, to dress for this particular um, premiere because it's not black tie, whereas when we went to the James Bond premiere, it was very, very much like a, a glitz and glamour event. Whereas this, the, 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 the dress code is end of summer chic, which is obviously something that you can interpret as you wish. And so I've gone for obviously a, a, a very dramatic shirt dress, um, but I'm kind of a bit worried that I'm gonna be a bit underdressed. But anyway, we shall see. And then the final thing, I also picked up um, the limited edition Penhaligon's fragrance, which is their fast car, it was their fast car one, and they did the most incredible launch at Blenheim Palace. And I smelt it and in all honesty, I would wear that fragrance, but I also, it was very, very Mr. Mill and Gordon as well. So I got that for Mr. Mill and Gordon because um, yeah, it was, it was so incredible. And I really, really think that that's one that is kind of like, I quite like that it's this very much um, like car inspired fragrance. Cause I think that you would typically think that that was a men's fragrance, but it was so, so wearable for women as well. And finally I picked up which I don't think I can get out because it's closed and I don't want to ruin it, but I've got a really wonderful, like amber, um, it's, a good, it's a good autumn candle, I would say, um, and I'd never smelt Penhaligon's candles, and things I really liked is that it's not just they've taken their fragrances and put them into a candle, no, no, their candle range is completely uh, separate from their fragrances and they have their own scents and identities and names and things like that I love the packaging like if you know someone I know that like my American audience a lot of them are very very passionate about um, English heritage a lot of them a lot of you girls are quite royalist girls and guys are quite into the royals and things like that and um, this is definitely a brand that if you really love brands that encapsulate British kind of history and identity and, and things like that, you'll love this brand because it very much does that. It feels very, like I said, experiential. And um, yeah, their candles, this, they make such a perfect gift for people, but then they have so many other gifting options as well, like uh, embossed leather pouches for your fragrances. Just the fragrances themselves are so beautiful. It's, you can find something for everyone, basically. So anyway, that's what I picked up. It was a very, very lovely way to spend the morning. We then went for coffee and just chatted about so many different things. Um, so now we're here, I'm gonna get my dress on, get refreshed, and we are going to head for a girly day. So we're having our, um, we're going to see the premiere of the film, and then we're coming back for drinks at the Savoy, because like I said, I've been here before, but I've never ever got to experience it like this. And this room is just magical. We were literally like, like screaming girls like oh so yes i'm gonna get ready and uh let's head to the premiere okay fragrance of the evening is penhaligon's lady blanche which oh it's actually the revenge of lady blanche and my outfit is last season karen millen with this season karen millen which launches in this vlog so you will be able to shop this right now um this is this season Karen Millen, so it comes in black with silver hardware and tan with sort of more champagne hardware. And I'm wearing it over this dress because I just think it kind of cinches it in and gives it a bit more of like a sexy vibe. Hair is left as it was, makeup is my usual because I've not added anything to it. I feel a bit weird in this dress code. The dress code is a little bit, I'm, I feel like a little bit weird about it. I'm not sure what to wear. So I'm, um, I thought I'd just go with something that I feel comfortable in, that's still quite dramatic. Uh, but not Sheep. too much. Yeah, just a little bit maybe understated. I'm not sure. Perfect. But anyway, let's go. Let's go. Oh, 
Oh, I love this cinema. It's so great. Welcome to Leicester Square and the Odeon Lux to the world premiere of Ticket to Paradise. Can I ask you all to take your seats? I love the sound of the rustling popcorn. Just hold that thought for a second. Keep an eye on them. They've got some game. You may hear about something in the future. Um, please welcome the Queen of the World and the man Jesus calls Sir, uh, Julia Roberts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a couple of things very quickly. Yes, thank you to everyone. Thank you to all who did a beautiful job. Thank you very much. It's weird to take a, a curtain ball before you've seen the film. Uh, but I would say that uh, if you like the film tonight, you're welcome. Uh, and if you don't like it, well, you know, uh, Julie hasn't done many romantic comedies. <laughs> and I had to work with her, and so you be kind to her. Really, be kind. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> we hope you enjoy the film, and if you don't, really, truly blame all. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our amazing cast and filmmakers of Ticket to Paradise. Okay, we have on the music. Oh, it's right. No, it's right. we're here. Yeah, yeah, so basically we just realized that our seats reclined in the cinema, so that's what I wanted to tell you. This is a close-up you didn't need. This is a close-up you did not need, but we're, we're having Prosecco and popcorn, and we've just seen Julia Roberts and George Clooney in, like, meters away. Yeah, 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 but more importantly, our chairs reclined. <laughs> That's a vibe. I will be having many bumps of caviar in this bar. Oh my goodness. Oh, there is nothing quite like getting into the bed at the Savoy after what was the most wonderful girly evening. I feel like we need a debrief. Okay, so let's talk about the film because there are so many thoughts so I initially I had really really like good good vibes about the film um obviously walking the red carpet with Julia Roberts and George Clooney like I feel like there are certain people that are just made for that kind of life you know the people that like you see walk out and they just have such confidence and they just totally believe that they are supposed to be there I don't think that will ever be me like it's it's almost like an out of body experience because for the most part nowadays in my life i am this calm person that my like anxiousness or anything like that is peaked by nothing but tonight i was f physically physically shaking like i i met saffron barker for the first time after obviously admiring her for just forever and I'm stood there talking to her and then all of a sudden I'm like called onto the thing and I just, I'm just a mess. I can't remember anything. I like completely black out in front of the photographers. I can't remember a single thing. And I really wish that I was one of those people that it just came to like effortlessly and elegantly. Maybe it's something that will come with time and maybe I'll learn it, but it just, I, I'm honestly like a duck out of water when I'm in those situations. Anyway. So obviously walking the red carpet or green carpet with Julia Roberts and um, George Clooney was a bit of an experience. And then we went in and can I just say that the, the Leicester Square Odeon is the comfiest cinema I think I've ever, ever like sat in. And then they obviously before a film premiere, if you don't know, the directors and all of that kind of thing, they all come out before the actors. And they were kind of bigging it up. And when they started bigging it up, I was like, oh, I don't know if I 
feel like this is going to be very good I don't know because they were saying like it's kind of like the rom-coms of 20 years ago well if you think of what the rom-coms of 20 years ago it's like Notting Hill like all of the the iconic films basically and I was like oh I feel like you're bigging out up now and I don't, I don't know anyway it started and I have to say the moment that it started I knew it was going to be good like I knew it was going to be good it's so well done in the beginning like the way that it f I'm not going to give any spoilers but it kind of flip-flops between the lives of each of them and it just it instantly grabs you and captures you which I think is brilliant anywho my general consensus of the film is I loved it like for a girl's trip to the cinema or a girl's night at home you are going to love every moment of it do i think that it's like as iconic and not as notting hill the holiday those kinds of things which actually some of the directors i believe are responsible for notting hill and obviously a very famous scene of notting hill was filmed at the savoy but um i don't think it's going to be iconic and the reason why i don't think it's going to be as iconic and Carrie and I discussed this, is because of where it's set. It doesn't have, um, how do I explain this? Without, yeah, it doesn't have timelessness, but I feel like anyone that is passionate about the place where it's set may be offended by that. But so it's, it's just a different, it doesn't necessarily have the same romantic magic as the places where the other films were set and I feel like that's a huge part of the magic of some of those old chick flick rom-com films some other funny things that I noticed about it is that she heavily Julia Roberts heavily wears Gucci throughout and this I picked up on instantly and it's re it's for the most part a lot of the classic pieces of Gucci and I feel like I want to make sure that you watch this with open eyes because it felt to me like Gucci was trying to tap back into the women that really loved that timeless aesthetic of the Gucci before Alessandro Michele came on board and I wasn't convinced. Julia Roberts in a pair of Gucci platforms was not, it didn't do it for me. Some of the outfits you'll what you'll see, especially the airport outfit with the stirrup leggings, if you watch it, unreal. Made me want to go and buy some stirrup leggings straight away. I'm not going to because I know better. It's a trend. But she just looked phenomenal through in and then there was some where she like the boiler suit I I couldn't get on, on board with. But for the most part it is shot so beautifully. Like I audibly was like, wow, oh my goodness. And it kept me entertained as someone who has a very, very fleeting attention span. I was hooked the whole way through. I cried at the end. If I can put the clip in of me crying, you would have seen it. I was in floods of tears at the end because it really was so magical. Julia and um, George Clooney together are magical. They are, they have such a great chemistry and you could really tell the moments when they weren't just having fun for the cameras, they were actually laughing and having a good time, which I thought was, you can always tell a genuine moment. And there were so many of those throughout the film. And yeah, so it, it, Carrie said a really good thing. She was like, I wouldn't watch it every year in the same way that I watch like the holiday or something like that. Mm -hmm. But five years from now, if I'm having like a girl's night, it would be like, oh my gosh, I would so watch Ticket to Paradise. <laughs> and um, yeah, so overall, amazing, really good, so entertaining and exactly what you want from a film, especially like for girls night. The way that we've done it is so perfect, like a night at the Savoy, pyjamas, champagne, an amazing film, just good food huh cheese cheese like all of the good stuff and now getting into bed in like comfies and cozies it really is so that was obviously phenomenal and i really hope you do go and watch it this is not just because i was invited it's not me telling you that it's good i would totally tell you that's why i don't go to I, this is i think this is like my second film premiere 
because I only say yes to the films that I actually want to go and watch. Um, and this, I, I genuinely, I think you'll love it. I do. I don't think it, it would, it will like change your life in the way that films like Notting Hill did. But the other thing, before I stop rambling on, the other thing that we noticed was like their teeth. Like obviously they're older now and it's, it was just really interesting to see like, I don't know why I feel this way, but to see George Clooney and Julia Roberts teeth and see them looking like normal teeth, like just normal human teeth, not like perfect Hollywood smiles. And then you notice that obviously like they've aged and I'm sure that they have like a help in aging, but aging in the most sort of authentic way possible. Like the Julia Roberts, like crow's feet. I was like, oh my God, I, I literally want crow's feet like yours. And just seeing the natural texture of their skin, the natural color of their teeth, it isn't like fluorescent white. It was, I think it was a really positive, a really positive thing and I think all of the actors and actresses or all of them are called actors I don't know were just really kind of normal in 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 that kind of aspect which I quite liked but it was very funny lots of moments where everyone was just kind of laughing and enjoying it and it was just brilliant and then we left there left left the the cinema afterwards we didn't stay for drinks actually we we ended up getting a taxi back to the Savoy for a wonderful evening at their Beaufort bar, which is just such a vibe. And I feel like I've recently been discovering a lot of um, hidden places where Carrie and I can come to when we have drinks, etc., etc., and just enjoy. What is that? Ooh! Oh, stop it. So there's a bookcase in our um, room, and Carrie's just found me a book by edited by Alan Taylor and it's called The Country Diaries, A Year in the British Country Said. Oh my gosh, I feel like this is like the year in Provence, but English. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've just finished up at the bar. It was last orders and we were saying, oh my God, let's go out, out. But both of us are actually quite tired. So we thought we'd come up to our room, get into our pajamas, take off our makeup. I'm gonna take mine off in a minute and snuggle into bed because although we don't have an early start tomorrow, we do have to be out of here by about 12-ish, so um, it shouldn't be too hectic. But I do want to show you the view from our living room, which is quite something. Just look at this. Oh. And then you come out here, and it's raining a little bit, which is actually very atmospheric, but we've got just Look at that. What a way to go to sleep. Good night, London. Hello, Sloppy. Good morning, London. <laughs> Happy birthday, Miranda. I can't believe we saw him. We saw the guy that did, oh no, you can't show me like this. I've actually recorded for. Um, we saw the guy at the, um, the, what's it called? The premiere last night and I didn't have the balls to go up to him, the guy that's like, happy birthday, Miranda, from the top of the Shard in London. <laughs> and if, I don't know if you remember, but when we stayed at the Shard, we reenacted it, so yeah. I'm editing my reel of tomorrow and sometimes I can't believe my life. Editing a reel of tomorrow? You are a magician. Sorry. <laughs> First of all, it's not a reel, it's TikTok. And second of all, of yesterday. There we go. I can't believe, like... Yeah. The cool stuff that I get to do is so much fun. It was quite snazzy. Mm. Literally just editing my clip of George Clooney and then it's the clip of me walking the red carpet with Julia Roberts. I'm George Clooney, but she's more important. What? <laughs> Could you please open this for me? No, that's not what you were doing. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I am about to choose my breakfast from the Savoy breakfast. 
May you? And you're a civilized human being. I am. Okay, <laughs> now go back to doing what you asked me. <laughs> in, in... <laughs> Please, madame. Okay. I don't have the wrist strength. I don't know who does these up. So you're born to be driven and water opened. Yeah. At all times. <laughs> I'm born for many things. Right, choose your breakfast. We have the sounds of London playing out in our room this morning, but I am going to prop you up. Am I propping you up here? Yes, I am. Nobody really needs to see me like this in the morning, but I wanted to share this experience with you because quite honestly, I think that um, the Savoy is one of those places that is just magical when you stay here. And that is even down to their breakfast menu. Like, seriously, their breakfast menu is something else. So, <clears throat> and we begin. Uh, the Savoy breakfast is an option. You have the continental breakfast, the Savoy vegetarian breakfast, the Savoy vegan breakfast. Then you have the eggs a la carte, eggs Benedict, egg, eggs Florentine, salmon royale, eggs and soldiers was a favorite of ours, two free range eggs, or you can create your own omelet or omelet Arnold Bennett. Then you have the on sourdough toast menu, which is crushed avocado or wilted spinach or marinated tomato or brown crab on toast. And then you have a choice of many different sides, including hash browns and baked beans. Then we move on to the a la carte menu, which is salmon bagel or a pea and mint. I'm guessing I have no idea what that is. The breakfast burger consisting of a Cumberland sausage and Stornoway black pudding. Uh, open scotch egg and or a selection of cold cuts and artisanal is that how you say it Artisa artisanal artisanal cheeses and toast of course white wholemeal multigrain rye english muffin or sourdough then we move on to the sweet classics which is the pancakes the vegan pancakes the cinnamon brioche french toast the waffles and the bakery basket then you have a choice of yogurts natural greek yogurt berry soy organic muesli with soy yogurt then we move on to the cereals the breakfast cereals the i can't believe i'm reading you the full breakfast menu but in all honesty this is extensive um there's fruits and cereals as well but then what i really like is they've got juices pressed juices they also have a little gluten-free menu of porridge and i can have the cinnamon brioche french toast gluten-free there's also a kids menu and when i tell you that this is like that's just the breakfast menu. Usually you've got like, usually you've got like just one menu and it has everything in, but that is just the breakfast menu. Of course I'm having the gluten-free French toast, okay? That's what I'm having. Breakfast is served. Carrie's gone for something far healthier than me. And we are overlooking Big Ben and the London Eye. Well, we are up and the weather has completely turned here in London. It was bright sunshine this morning and you could see it right out across London. It was very, very beautiful, but true to English style. Um, <laughs> the heavens have opened and the sheet of cloud has covered the sky. This kind of sheet of cloud always makes me think of um, flying into London Heathrow or London Gatwick because above those clouds, I know obviously we know this, but above those clouds will be beautiful sunshine and you, you just can't see it. I feel like that's a metaphor for something. <laughs> but um, yes, this is something that you'll often see in England, this thick sheet of cloud that just covers it and makes it look really miserable and sad. But we're leaving London now. We are heading back home. Ali has been sending me pictures and updates of um, what's been going on at the house. I actually cannot believe the speed of this team. Like they are unreal. Um, so what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop all of the updates in the next vlog because this has just been such a magical trip to London. I feel like I would be kind of like just, I'd be diluting this magic of a girl's trip to London. So what I'll do is I'll start a new vlog straight away and I'll show you exactly what's been happening at the house and kind of like my first impressions as well. But a huge thank you to the, the Savoy for hosting us. We have had the most wonderful stay. It really has been so magical. I've said to Carrie that we should do this again, like really kind of make a girl's thing of it where we come and stay at the Savoy, book a suite, go and do something fabulous. Carrie wants to do an open top bus tour in, in summer. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but with champagne and yeah just just make a real thing of it because I feel like it would just be such a lovely little yearly tradition or something like that so yes anyway I will see you guys in my next vlog thank you so much for watching bye